Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamazi here. This is going to be my War Within Pre-Patch Affliction Warlock DPS Guide. And we're going to be covering uh, tier set interactions, single target talents, AoE talents, rotations and single target and AoE, and basically everything along the way you need to know if you want to play Affliction Warlock in the War Within Pre-Patch. If you see any weak wars or add-ons in the video like they require, links to my Twitch and Discord down below where you can get them all for free. Uh, at the same time, quick heads up at the War Within Beta Warlock Spreadsheet is indeed live on Patreon if you'd like early access to that. Uh, if you want that, uh, the tier three Felguard rank or higher does indeed get it, but it goes live, it goes public before everything launches and all that with the expansion. Oh, quick yeah. shameless plug. If you want to vote for me or really any content creator in the finals for the MMO awards, uh, right over here is linked down below in the description. Uh, feel free to do so. It ends in about two weeks and uh, I have been nominated for content creator of the year. Whether you guys want to vote for me or somebody else, you should vote in general because a lot of awesome creators have been nominated. And now let's get into it. All right, so when it comes to Affliction Warlock's tier bonus in pre-patch, they are indeed still functioning. However, there's a talent we've gotten that's new. It's called Malign Omen, and this is essentially what our tier bonus is currently in Season 4. It's a 20% buff to Rapture, not 50% like our tier bonus is, but they do sort of work hand in hand. Now, our four piece, which is active once again in pre patch, uh, gives three raptures after you cast Soul Rot a 50% damage increase. Uh, and whenever you rapture, it extends the duration of them by two seconds your dots and your haunt. Now, that duration extension is a thing for both your tier bonus and Malign Omen, but I can show you that it does not, it unfortunately does not stack when it comes to raw extensions here. Whenever you rapture, you only get two seconds 13 to 15, 14 ish. It's not four seconds per it doesn't stack like that however you can see both buffs here these buffs do indeed stack damage wise the tier bonus 50 percent this is 20 percent now it does not math out to 70 percent though i think it's 50 and then 20 percent of 50. i'm getting like 60 to 62 percent roughly for rapture increases looking at it in varying settings i'm not sure where it's going to land uh maybe it's a bug i'm not really sure this is actual beta and not ptr because ptr is down but this is indeed my character at level 70 with tier gear on talents so on and so forth so there is indeed an interaction here between malign omen and your four piece tier set the two piece increases soul rot damage and duration which is fine uh it's the same as it was in s3 and 4 it does indeed still work and you do want to play both talents for the max rapture damage increase all right so when it comes to stat weights very briefly in pre-patch sims aren't done fully uh they're not public or anything yet either and i've run a few stat weight sims here and there but they don't seem incredibly accurate to me and honestly a lot of it's sort of up in the air with gearing and things being the way that they are i would just follow the same stat priority you follow for a long time as af uh what you're following in s4 currently uh roughly haste the mastery crit then verse verse a bit more value in s4 due to like trinkets and things but regardless uh whatever it was before it follows basically that and when sims are fully done and fleshed out you can run your own sims top your sims go from there but that's typically just what i do uh, heading into pre-patch and so on and so forth so i have three talent builds here to show you today um i'm gonna say that, well like i just said like talents and sims are still a little experimental uh i haven't i've run some on my own but um they're not fully 100 fleshed out and optimized yet i'm going to show you what i've been playing um over the course of beta which is pretty similar to pre-patch with a couple changes here and there due to hero talents not being out in pre-patch so this is the first build i'm playing here um in single target and uh, you know i've been playing hellcaller for most of beta but these aren't out until 71 so not getting those until actual expansion launch and the big thing here uh things i want to hit on number one you're playing absolute corruption everywhere now you you can play siphon life it's 20 percent corruption damage increase compared to 15 but ac saves you a lot of globals refreshing corruption uh ease of play just all the above hey ac is pretty cool um so i i would recommend playing ac everywhere might see some siphon life play down the line see where it goes um if you're like trying to truly optimize things and in the end siphon play is fine it's a passive now but you know, i'm playing ac everywhere and that's gonna be that uh, i am playing one point in volatile agony no points here in dark virtuosity one point here is better than one point here i've run the math on it it's it's correct that's where you want to go Getting down here further, uh, so I've been playing Shadow Bolt in single target, and it does indeed appear to be better than Drain Soul. We'll see where it goes down the line uh, when things progress in that the actual expansion and such. But in single target, I have indeed been playing Shadow Bolt. If you want the Drain Soul playstyle, that's fine too. Keep in mind, uh, Shadows Embrace has four stacks with uh, Drain Soul now, and two with Shadow Bolt. So stack the four if you're playing Drain Soul, and stack the two if you're playing Shadow Bolt. 
Summoner's Embrace here. Just too good over this. You play it basically everywhere. Uh, Singularity here, and you're playing Infirmity. This is our tier bonus from Aberis, giving you a damage amp whenever PS is active. Uh, playing Cunning Cruelty, very good when it comes to... I mean, it's good in AoE. It's even good in single target. Just solid talent all around. Uh, a point in Haunt, a point in Shadow's Embrace, and you are playing Dark Glare. Now heading down here, you're playing one point Malevolent Visionary. This is indeed worth it in single target, as well as AoE. I've mathed it out. Just trust me. If you don't want to play it, it's fine, but you're losing damage. Um, two points of Malediction, two points of Contagion, and then getting into the final row here. This is where things are a little, uh, I guess, iffy. Now, I think this is likely the best build in single target. You're playing Creeping Death, Xavius' Gambit, Oblivion, uh, Malignancy, a point in Malign Omen for your Rapture extensions, which does work for your tier bonus, damage-wise, not extension-wise, but that's fine. Uh, a point in Crescendo, a point in Improved Malefic Rapture right here, and then finally a point in Malefic Touch, which does indeed now scale with Mastery. Now, when I've been on beta a good bit, I've been playing a build that looks like this, actually. A bit more, a bit more when it comes to single target. Uh, we've been playing this because of Hellcaller and Wither, so on and so forth. I don't want this in pre-patch for not playing Hellcaller. No wither, uh, not unlocked yet. So I've been going like this. I believe this is likely the best build in single target, if not very close. This is where I'm starting. I'm gonna see where it goes, and this is why I would recommend uh, day one looking at single target stuff and go from there. Now, when it comes to ST Cleave base builds like Demonology, Affliction has baseline AoE in its toolkit, even in single target. You've got Seed, you've got Singularity, uh, Rapture's your main spider now, and AoE. So there's that. But in ST Cleave, changing a few, a few talents here, uh, I am indeed shifting out of uh, Xavius's Gambit here, Oblivion, heading into Sacralash, heading into Cold the Week, and that is basically the only like main changes. I have indeed pulled a point out of Malevolent Visionary here. Uh, you could just pull this point here and put it there if you want a little bit more like cooldown emphasis. That's fine too. Uh, to a similar extent, you might want to play Vile Taint over Singularity, depending how much ST Cleave you're having. Uh, and you make your own choice based on what fight you're in, so on and so forth. Uh, we are indeed playing Malefic Touch still. This does work at AoE. It's every mob that, you know, Rapture hits. Uh, when it comes to Oblivion and Xavius's Gambit, uh, sort of mediocre, honestly. UA is pretty subpar in the first place. This is more single target focused, and, you know, that is basically that. Uh, to a similar extent, you could pull a point from up here somewhere, like up here, and put it in Dark Harvest, depending on if the cleave lines up well with your Soul Rot windows, or you want this extra element of haste and crit. And do that too. Uh, I think this is the best like general price starting point for ST cleave. Um, but yeah, semi-customizable depending on what you want and all of that. And when it comes to raw AOE M plus, this is where I've been start or it's been playing, starting, whatever. Uh, I've swapped to Drain Soul here, shard sniping, mobs dying off in an M plus, one shards and one pack to the next. To a similar extent, we are playing Vile Tank over PS here. Half a minute cooldown agony applications we're not playing infirmity here i don't think this is worth it compared to like what ps does with infirmity compared to vile taint but some people like it some don't i haven't played it a whole lot um if you want to play it give it a shot but not a huge deal to me two points in cold of the week soul rot malign omen heading in the dark harvest here basically an m plus you're pretty much guaranteeing that your soul rots on trash packs are going to cleave so big crit amp big haste amp one point in creeping death uh heading into the crescendo Improve Rapture and Malefic Touch being pretty solid and plus, you know, AOE, Rapture being your main spender now. Malefic Rapture, Malefic Touch, multiple times in your pack, feels pretty good. Uh, Volta Agony having more value too, because like, refreshing Agony on, you know, multiple mobs at once with Vile Taint, if you're in this window here, or even just in general, splashes on the more mobs. Uh, playing AC here as well, and uh, yeah, that is basically that, rounding out the M plus build. I want to emphasize again here, all these builds are a little experimental. Um, some sims have been run, but they're not like, fully fleshed out and all that using custom APL, so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure this is very close to being optimal, if not optimal, for most uh, settings and most builds here I talked about. If you want the links to the build, down below in the description. And uh, yeah, let's get into the rotation part of the video. Now, when it comes to Afflictions opener and single target, it's actually pretty simple. The general rotation is too. Simpler than it is on retail due to no dread touch. Uh, Siphon Life now a passive effect. You're playing absolute corruption regardless, but even if you want to play Siphon Life, it's pretty simple. Uh, and it's very close to what you do on retail. So if you played it on retail at all, this is pretty much the same thing, barring hitting Oblivion once every minute or so. Now, I am holding Oblivion for PS Windows every minute due to Infirmity Damage Amp. That might change, but that's what I'm doing here currently. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to precast a Haunt, which has travel time, into a precast Unstable Affliction, which you hit the boss at the same time whenever he's pulled, and then go from there. So we're going to precast a Haunt here. 
free cash UA, Agony, Corruption, Cast Shadow Bolt twice here for Max Stacks of Shadows Embrace. One, two, Singularity, Soul Rot, Dark Lair, Trinkets if you got them here, whatever you want, pop it. Uh, Rapture a bit here, and then hit Oblivion when you're at two shards. Now, the shard gen there wasn't the best. I definitely had better. I've had five shards in the past. Sometimes you get multiple Shendo procs, which gives you instant cast Raptures. Um, you just want to dump as much as you can in this window. You can see your PS and your Soul Rot last a long time here due to, like, your Dark Lair extension, your Malign Omen extensions, your Tear Set extensions, all that stuff. So you get a good bit of time to, like, dump shards, you know, later on in this window. Now, besides that... We're playing Absolute Corruption. So you basically have two dots to manage here, being Agony, Unstable Affliction, and then your Haunt whenever it's off cooldown, right? So we'll just keep casting here again. I'll cast this TC proc right about now. Free Rapture, why not? Catch my Agony before it falls. And besides this, you're just maintaining dots. Cast my Haunt essentially when it falls, maintain UA, maintain Agony, and holding my Oblivion from my one minute Rapture window here. Now I'm going to have, you know, that window in about five seconds here. So I'm gonna refresh my Agony, refresh UA a little early here. I'm gonna cast a Shadow Bolt here to refresh Shadow's Embrace, then go Singularity, Soul Rot, Fresh Haunt Duke, because why not, and just begin Rapturing. All right, Rapture, Rapture, two procs here, so three Raptures right there. Dump a few more shards here, hit my Oblivion, and uh, that is that. Cast a Shadow Bolt here to cast Shadow's Embrace. That's basically it. You're gonna have these one minute Rapture windows, which consists of casting Soul Rot and Singularity or Bile Tank if you're playing it single target, put up reason. And every other one, Every two minutes, it's going to have a dark glare in it, which is right here. So it's going to be basically big window with PS, you know, PS, soul rot, and dark glare on pull. Then a minute later, you got a small one with just PS and soul rot, no dark glare. Then a minute later, basically about 20 seconds, 20 seconds from now, you'd have PS, soul rot with dark glare for a bigger window, right? That's how it goes. Besides that, you're maintaining agony, maintaining unstable affliction. If you're playing Siphon Life for whatever reason, you can just maintain that too, maintain corruption basically. But if you're playing this, it's permanent. It's very easy to play, straightforward, not complicated at all, and uh, yeah, it just feels good. Let's look at it briefly in AoE. Now, when it comes to Afflictions, AoE Rotation, Mythic Plus, and all that, honestly, it's still pretty straightforward and not a whole lot changes. You're still playing AC. Uh, we are indeed playing uh, Drain Soul here. We're playing Vile Taint over Singularity, and we're playing Dark Harvest amongst the talents you can feel it change. Uh, it gives you, giving you a larger haste and crit amp whenever you cast your Soul Rot. Now, when you're heading into a packet M+, plus, uh, you're going to cast Seed to mass apply your Corruptions, and then the rest of your shards are spent you know, on Rapture. We're not playing Oblivion here or anything. We're just basically playing Seed. Or casting seed for corruption applications and then just rapture spam or a shard every half a minute into vile tank to apply mass agonies so what i'm going to do here uh let's say the tank's running in rounding the pack up and stuff i want to cast a seed on a mob that's going to be in the middle that will explode on other mobs giving you mass corruptions into a vile tank and then find like a, a mob's like a prior target to put your haunt and ua on for a bit more funnel damage and then basically go from there so what we're going to do here say this is the mob i want packs being rounded up we're going to cast a seed of corruption into a Vile Taint. I'm gonna go Unstable Affliction, Haunt on this Prio Mob, Soul Rot, Dark Lair, Trinkets, Potions, whatever, and just begin Rapturing. That's it, right? Uh, you can, you're playing Drain Soul here, so you can spend Nightfall procs, watch your Crescendo procs here too, dump them whenever you want, uh, whenever you can essentially. Don't over cap, uh, don't cap, and sit at two stacks for a while. Refresh my Haunt, this mob here, the Prio Mob. If you want, you can try to spread Actual like Shadows and Braces around if you have time with Drain Souls, but sort of whatever. Catch these Agonies before they fall. Catch this UA. Then Rapture a few more times here. I can cast Vile Taint now. They have half a minute left in the cooldown of Soul Rot, so a free Vile Taint in the middle there. There might be a case, I will say right there, if you want to watch that point back in the video, to hold that Vile Taint for when the Agonies you refresh manually hit 10 seconds or less. Because whenever that happens, you enter a threshold where you trigger Vile to Agony whenever you cast Agony. And Vile Taint applying multiple Agonies does indeed trigger Vile Taint on multiple targets. I'll show you here actually after this essentially. So uh, I have Soul Rot in one, I have Vile Taint in about three. So we're just gonna go straight up. Hey, we're Soul Rotting again. Vile Taint, watch the Agony trigger here. That damage event. That is Vile to Agony going off with Vile Taint being applied right there. Once again, just rapturing down here. Uh, refreshes UA when it gets low. And that's it. It's very, sim uh, very simple. Vile Taint does not line up for every Agony refresh. You have to like sort of, you know, cast Vile Taint and refresh manually like right here, basically now, triggering Volta Agonies for more damage at AoE. And then cool, about five seconds later, I have Vile Taint again. It's an awkward CD cycling sequence, whatever. It is what it is, but regardless, it's not 
that bad at all. And just to clarify, Volatile Agony is this. So whenever you refresh Agony with 10 seconds remaining on Agony, it does damage to all targets around it. Uh, and having Vile Taint reapply those Agonies does indeed trigger Volatile Agony on every single mob that has less than 10 seconds on Agony. Besides that, it's very simple. Same cooldown cycle as like single targets. You're going to have your Dark Lair for two minutes. So it's like Dark Lair with Soul Rot and Vile Taint. You can cast one Vile Taint in between each Soul Rot because Soul Rot's a minute long or minute cooldown. And Vile Taint's half a minute. There you go. There might be certain times in M plus where a pack is dying and you have Vile Taint off CD or coming off CD, but you sort of want to hold it for the next pack. So you can run into that pack, cast a seed, quickly go Vile Taint for mass agony applications, and then go from there. So you got to feel that out a little bit. But once again, the rotation is very simple, uh, not complicated at all. You cast seed one time to apply corruptions in AOE, and then you just cast Rapture as your main charge vendor. And that is AF in AOE. So thanks for watching guys this wraps it up and hopefully if you have any questions about affliction warlock in war within pre-patch this video answered them for you uh like i said the talent builds are still a little bit experimental but i'm pretty sure we're locked in on what's best if not very close to being best in single target cleave and aoe if anything changes i'll put the uh links below and with y'all you know and go from there but it's pre-patch uh expansions out in a month which is crazy to think about but well you know Yes, it is what it is. So if you guys want any week horrors, add-ons on the video, links to Twitch and Discord down below. We can give up for free. Uh, at the same time, in the end of every video, thank you all a million times for all support on Patreon, guys. Uh, like always, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, it should be a link up here as well as down below in the description. And heads up, the War Within Beta Warlock Spreadsheet, Warlock spreadsheet excuse me, is indeed live on Patreon if you want early access to that. Uh, the Tier 3 Belgard Anchor Hire does get it, but it will go live, it will go public regardless before the expansion launches. And uh, yeah. That is that so uh tomorrow will be the destruction video coming out for pre-patch and then there should be a video on monday as long as i have time uh talking about add-ons what to do in pre-patch uh and so on and so forth but i'm excited um there's there's things to do in pre-patch but the biggest thing to me is like whenever it hits it's like okay this is coming it's basically right here this is sick i'm excited for it hopefully y'all are too and uh yeah basically a month until launch it's gonna be crazy but uh, I'm ready, I think. Hopefully you all are too. So all the things that, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.